This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you in partnership with ministryleague.com. We would love for more people to discover this show, so please rate and review us on iTunes or your podcast provider. Feel free to share on your social media and subscribe at benandtravis.com for the free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living. Welcome in to the Helping Healing Humor podcast with Ben and Travis. We are glad that you guys are here with us listening in once again. And we are coming to you from my old bedroom at my parents' house. There used to be a bunk bed right back there behind us and um, some really uh, interesting memories at this old house. But we're thankful to be hanging out here for a little while um, and thankful that you guys are with us. We just got through celebrating my dad's birthday, so uh, we thought we would jump in here and <laughs> record a couple of podcasts since yeah. we were together, so why not? For sure. So, Man, what a great birthday. I'm glad I got to be here and uh, participate and get to see some cool stuff. Pulled out his old Central High School baseball jersey. And awesome. um, I'm in town to do Jacksonburg Homecoming tomorrow. Sure. As if day. Jacksonburg hasn't had enough of you lately. Yeah, I know. Was that their retreat? retreat? <laughs> Not often you get invited to do retreat the week before and then invited back for homecoming the next week. But uh here we are. Here we are. And uh, I was going to share, you know, since it's dad's birthday and back in this old room where the bunk beds are, I remember uh, as a kid, my dad got on to us and, um, you know, you used to get whoopings back mm-hmm. then. So I got a whooping and uh, my, my brother and I were bunking in this room together and uh, my oldest brother was uh, down the hall. And uh, so dad gave us a whooping. And I whispered to my brother, I said, man, that didn't hurt at all. And my dad came back in that door right there and said, well, do you want some more? I said, no, sir, that'll be enough. I'm <laughs> sorry. I miss, I, I, it did actually, it, it hurt. It hurt a lot. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, you never got any whippings in your uh, day, did you? No, I'm pretty sure I touched all the bases, as in every aunt and uncle, you know, and if you're out <laughs> there, you I'm, hold not the challenging. I'm not challenging you hold any the record. of you that, that didn't get it on the disciplining me, man, but I appreciate it now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now. I mean, hey, it got us through, <laughs> right? Did. I mean, I, it did. Uh, still I don't know where we would be without some of the disciplinary actions still of our here. parents, and so anyway, here we are. And so uh, we've had a couple of people write in some uh, questions, uh, send us some things, uh, maybe ideas for the podcast. And so another topic that I know we've probably covered at some point, but maybe uh, not in great detail that we're going to just touch on just a little bit uh, today as we uh, speak together is the topic of divorce. Somebody brought that up and ask us about that. And, and me personally, in my family, uh, we we didn't go through that. I didn't go through that with my parents. You know, from the standpoint of this podcast, Travis, you did uh, experience that, and you had to walk through that journey um, with your parents getting a divorce when you were pretty young. I don't remember the exact yeah. age that that happened. I know we were doing a lot of things together during that time, but um, just kind of tell us a little bit about that experience and maybe some things that, that were helpful I guess that have been helpful to you through the years. Yeah, I, you know, I think we actually did. I think we've done two episodes, House Divided, and we talked about it. And so this time I, I kind of want to talk about some of the things that were maybe a little more difficult growing up, maybe teenage years, and, and discuss some of that and kind of the, the outcome. I, I always wanted to fit in. You know, I felt like I needed to feel acceptance. And uh, I think I spoke a little bit about the loyalty thing uh, when we kind of covered the discussion earlier. Uh, but, you are you know, you're kind of looking for that place to fit in and, you know, you experience that trauma and you try to, and I'm already, as we've talked about at length, I'm a seven. And so you're always kind of looking for the next good time. You know, you don't want to feel bad and so you want to feel good. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that kind of bore out of that was, and I think it's something that all men and really human beings in general at different levels deal with but lust it was was something that uh, was bore out of that the, the need to feel acceptance and also to feel in control uh, of the situation and so that was just kind of a big deal for me you know because uh, you know I think everybody's looking for some way out of feeling bad 
And, and yeah. we oftentimes, and I think the Bible is very, you know, open about that, that uh, we really can't trust ourselves. You know, Jesus said that the issues, you know, all these bad things come from the inside. Uh, and, and we have a lot of people out there in the world saying, oh, trust your heart, trust your gut, go with what feels right. And man, is that, yeah. I mean, that's just something that's not true, biblically yeah. speaking, spiritually speaking, um, in relation, I mean, on every level. Uh, very rarely should you go with your gut feeling or what makes you feel good. Yeah, so you know, you were mentioning that about in the scripture, James chapter one. You know, we're not we're not uh, tempted by God. God doesn't tempt man. He's not. He can't be tempted, and so he doesn't tempt us. But each man is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. And so, you know, Satan seems to know the things that will get out our hearts. He seems to know the ways. And like anything else, if you look in uh, the the animal kingdom, the weakest ones are the ones that get attacked um, in in the herd. And so, a lot of times when it comes to these things uh, like divorce or other situations, uh, you've kind of touched on that. That that with those difficult moments, with that trauma, uh, with those things that you're going through, it makes kind of a weak spot. Yeah. where those things can make their way into your life. Yeah, and you've spoke to, you know, when you're tired, when you're hungry, you know, when you're lonely. Uh, I don't know what all of them H are. Halt BS or yeah. Halt SB. I, I change it around so it doesn't sound bad, but the original is Halt, halt BS. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored, stressed. So when you get into one of those situations where it are weakest, and most of the time that's when you see people give in to addiction, give in to pornography, especially. I think that that's always been kind of taught yeah. with the pornography thing is that those are, are when people at their weakest. And it, the, the thing is, is, is that's absolutely true. And I've, I've, I'm kind of bridging the digital, uh, it, it, uh, analog. I've heard that digital yeah. analog. I, I kind of am in the middle of growing up where that shifted, you know, where if you wanted to find that stuff, right. you had to go and like go in a store and you got to, I mean, it's real personable. You got to look somebody in the eyeball and, and make that. And now we have cell phones yep. and computers and the internet is everywhere. And you don't have to do those things. It's so accessible, yep. which accessibility is what makes internet great, but not in this instance. And yeah. so, you know, I can't express anyway e even if you're not experienced a trauma like that that you have to guard your heart from those yeah. things and you you know parents out there be you know sober-minded <laughs> you know be be on your guard of your children because it is so easily and readily accessible and therefore a problem and i think that a lot of times the devil really likes that we're afraid to talk about things like this yeah uh, one of the things i've always heard is that the you know pornography stands if you, you kind of imagine a, a like a bar stool that's got three legs um, and it stands on those three things and it's anonymity so nobody knows about it uh, affordability which is um, you know the case now especially and um, uh, accessibility so those three A's are what it stands on and so you know, if you think about when we were younger, uh, when we were kids, there wasn't the online stuff. So, you know, the there was a couple of those things weren't an issue. So you, affordability, you had to go somewhere and buy it unless you had somebody who was going to let you look at their stuff or, you know, go, go to yeah. somebody's house or, you know, and I know that happened at school. That's probably the first time I ever was, um, you know, given the opportunity or, or tempted with it was, you know, friends at school or somebody had some. Um, so you, but you got like accessibility, uh, which, you know, you had to go to a store and get it. You had to buy it. And so then uh, the only thing was anonymity. And again, you had to go somewhere. Yeah. So somebody's going to see wrong. you, you know, mm -hmm. and everybody would go, you know, people would hide to go buy that or, you know, they would have to do something and, 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 and get into one of those worlds. So, now that's not the case. Now it is free on the internet. Most of, you know, in most places you can, obviously I'm sure there's things you can buy, but it's free. It's, you can, you're on your phone or your computer and nobody has to know about it and, you know, accessible. So all of those things are completely blown out of the water. 
Yeah. And so here we have a whole generation of people who are being who are having access to this uh, at younger and younger ages and going through some trauma like you have went through uh, with the the divorce um, that opened the door for you. But think about how many more traumas there. I mean, oh, the yeah. divorce rate is up, and, yeah. you know, all these different things that have happened and are happening in our society today. And when people are in those weak places, this is an easy escape. Yeah, and, and I've had discussion. I've, I've been a minister for 20 plus years now. We won't get into all those numbers, but you know, I've had discussions in, in one of the lies that I think Satan tells, and it's because we're really ashamed of the topic. We don't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. It's awkward. Uh, but anything that's in the dark is, you know, yeah. but, the, but the light represents the ability to discuss these things. And I've had kids who are like, you know, I just felt like I was weird. Uh, you know, and it was, it was, you know, I was the only one. And, you know, that couldn't be farther from the truth. We all struggle with lust at some level. Now, what have we done because of that? We don't, you know, we're not in a comparison game. But man, it, nothing could be further from the truth that everybody at some level has struggled with it. It even says that, you know, Jesus was tempted in all ways that we are. And so you, you kind of have to well, assume that, yeah. you know, that that was in there. And so, you know, I think that the devil loves to play that game that, yeah. you know, well, nobody else. And if everybody finds out if something, then, you know, nobody will ever look at you the same. And it's like, well, not really. You, you, the weird thing would be if you haven't had, you know, right. that struggle. And if you haven't, awesome, don't change. But, yeah. you know, I think the majority would easily say that, yes, I've, I've, done that before but also i think the other thing is you know as a man image based you know i think one of the biggest detriments in my struggle is is that that man i can recall those images at oh, the yeah. worst possible time and so it's just like one of those things where if you know you've not looked at things you shouldn't uh man i cannot stress to you don't ever start because you know, we are such visual beings. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that's, it's disappointing. <laughs> that's hard. It makes it difficult to overcome it. Uh, but that's the beauty of it is that Jesus can redeem any situation and any yeah. struggle. It's just how much are you willing to get help to do so? Yeah. And I think, you know, we were talking about how accessible it is today. And, and I'll just, you know, here recently, uh, I've been tempted to just get rid of, all you know facebook instagram i did just finally delete my instagram because i was spending too much time on there mm -hmm. but also those reels that pop up sometimes are not very clean and they're not they're not probably what you would say on the level of you know what most people think of as pornographic um but certainly not clean not good and and you know there's i just got tired of seeing those things yeah. so you know i i i got off one i've been close to getting off the other uh, just because of that stuff. And so once, because the problem is once you open the door to it, um, you know, and that's what a lot of people will tell you is it, it's, it makes it so much easier to get into other things and it continues on a path when, you know, something's Sin is not aggressive. It's, yeah. he, he's not going to leave you alone. Sin's not going to leave you alone. And once again, I don't think Satan is all powerful or everywhere like God is. We don't need his help to get into trouble. Right. Um, but sin is but aggressive. But he sure will supply. He sure he will. will. Yeah. He has no problem with that. And I think you know, I think that uh, Every Young Man's Battle was a great book that, that read and taught to bounce the eyes, not to linger. I think that's part of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, get rid of those things. Cut it, you know, Jesus went so far to say your right eye, your right mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. I would much rather you get rid of your Instagram and your Facebook and your smartphone or whatever before you go that route, but that's him telling you how important it is to control what you're influenced by. You know, the other thing is, is I know that we grew up and it was always kind of harping on the young ladies to dress, you know, appropriately. And we can't stress that enough. Yes, that's a good thing. Um, and I've heard before, well, it's not fair. And my response is, is that sin doesn't play fair. Right. You know, it's, there, there aren't any like rules that are set uh, when sin, you know, you know, and so I think the thing is, is to take the responsibility. If I knew of a way in which I could help, hopefully I would have it on my heart to do so, to help. Uh, you know, there is responsibility on the man to learn 
to not go down that path. Uh, but anything we can do to help, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, we should be found because it isn't fair. You know, things aren't fair. Sin, life is not fair. And certainly sin is not fair and Satan's not going to play fair. Right. And, and there's just so many ways in which today that, that you know, I mean, commercials uh, on on regular television, anywhere else. And, and it's been that way, I guess, for years. But there's so many ways in which um, people can be tempted in these areas. And I've, as a counselor, I've seen it um, ruin several marriages uh, because just because, and, and let me stress this too, that this is something that I think a lot of people believe that, hey, if I, you know, if I get married, these temptations go away. You know, when I get married, I won't, I won't be tempted to look at images online. I won't be tempted to watch the movies that I watched before. I won't need those things. And that's not the case. I've, I've, that's not been the case with the majority of the people that I've seen who struggle with uh, pornography and other things that have ruined their marriage is because, I mean, it doesn't go away. Uh, it's still going to be there uh, because it is one of those things where we're we're medicating almost uh, either a trauma or you know some desire or something that was um, missing or something not necessarily in a relationship. It's not like and I've I've tried to stress this because this is where it hurts marriages. Is somebody said why was I not enough? Why did he have to look at something or? And there's cases where why did she have to? Yeah. Um, ladies, I'm I'm probably gonna, you know, hurt some feelings here, but I'm I'm fairly certain that romance novels are the be, same man. thing for women that images are for men because it's an emotional thing and you're reading that and you're, you know, falling in love or or you know, having this image in your mind uh of something that's happening. So I think those sorts of things you know, why was I not enough? And it's not that you weren't enough because it's not on you. This isn't your fault that these things are happening. It's some need that somebody has um, that that they're fulfilling aside from that. Yeah. And so, in an unhealthy way. In an unhealthy way, exactly. Yeah, just like not, any, not making any substance for it. Yeah, you know, right. um, it has different impacts. And I think a coping mechanism, yes, which I was getting at, not, a, not a healthy That's thing, the word. but a coping mechanism for the stuff that's going and, on. And honestly, for our females, I've never seen it at this level. The, the pressure that's put on you to be open to these things. Yeah. And wow, I mean, I just can't imagine what that's like. And I, the other part of this is to encourage you to try to battle that, you know, to fight that. Because, you know, there's a lot of guys who claim to be Christian out there that, set an unhealthy bar, whatever it is. And I think the same thing with romance novels or movies. You just see these romantic movies, yeah. guys, you know, that they're just, those guys are not real. I hate to tell you. And it's the same thing with, with for the men. You know, those aren't <laughs> real. And they're setting up some level of disappointment because our expectations are not in line with what God has said. And so either our expectations are too high or they're too low. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's what I tell our young ladies at school. Hey, listen, you you don't I mean, your standards don't need to be. Way above what anybody could ever do, but you shouldn't have to lower healthy standards. Yeah. And, you know, there's so much you, you were talking about there's so many things that are being tempted, you know, people being tempted today. You know, something that didn't exist, too, when we were when we were kids was sending pictures to one another. You know, not stuff you're getting online and seeing these professionals or whatever. I mean, we're talking about kids sending pictures to each other and those kinds of things. Again, images that get burned into your mind that are hard for you to get rid of years later. And you're just thinking about, hey, I'm going to run into this person 20 years from now. Yeah. And that's what they're going to be remembering. Um, and on top of that, now uh, it's not just what's here, but. You don't ever get rid of those no, things. No, they, they start getting shared. They get posted. They get, you know, sent out. It's like throwing those feathers into the wind. You don't get it all back. All right, Ben, as we like to do, we're going to wrap up with a fun question. And as I'm excited for you guys, I'm not a big Major League Baseball fan, but I listen to it in respect 
for my family and have an opportunity to have something to talk about at Thanksgiving, maybe other than the Iron Bowl as it's coming up. But the Braves, man, what a big deal, right? Fired yeah, up. man, I'm super fired up. I watched them as a kid all the time. Uh, went some years during college uh, that I didn't pay as much attention to baseball in general. But uh, the last several years, I've really been following them, uh, and it's been fun. This year, I probably watched just about every game or followed about every single game in some way in the postseason. I was glued to it. Had to watch some of it on my phone. I had to watch the whole World Series on my phone because Comcast was not good to me, um, <laughs> and we didn't get – I mean, my, my lines just gave up on me for whatever reason, so I'm still waiting to get my internet back at my house. Um, but – it was awesome. Dude, I mean, it was I, amazing. I, out of respect to you guys, I, I would listen every night till the Astros scored, and then I would hang it up because I'm not superstitious, just a little stitches. Just a little stitches. Um, and there was a couple of times that the, the Astros never scored. So, And I, you know, we, were appreciative, we were appreciative of that. We're thankful yeah. that you were watching it. I wanted us. you guys to win. One of my friends would be happy because, well, just make Thanksgiving better. And, you know, that, that'll go a long way once Auburn beats us in the Iron Bowl. You know, Let's we'll hope help us get it. over it. But we don't want that to happen. I want to ask you, favorite moment of of the po- we'll go postseason. In fact, I mean, other than winning the World Series, which is a pretty big deal, is there a moment? Man, it's hard to pick any moment that was our player. We'll go favorite I like, player. Well, I like. I mean, all of it. I I, I loved the roster this year. Uh, it's been a struggle all year. Um, I was really down on. I guess I could say. My favorite part was watching the bullpen be so amazing because they had struggled all year. I had been down on them, as had all of my friends. <laughs> we had probably said a lot of things about the bullpen that we regret. Is this your this apology? This is my apology, <laughs> formal apology to Matzik and uh, to Jackson uh, and to especially, well, especially Jackson, uh, Luke Jackson, and to Will Smith, uh, mentor even we we gave some grief all all year, but especially to Jackson and Smith, and we didn't believe in you guys even through the postseason. We were a little nervous every time they took the mound, but they came out and just absolutely wore out every one of the opponents. I mean, of course, happy for Freddie Freeman, super happy for Snicker, who's been in the program for. 45 years for just the Braves. So, so awesome. many good stuff. But I, I think just watching the bullpen was both the moment and the players. Well, I love the video where Soler hits that homer and all the Astros fans, like their little fans or whatever they were doing, just yeah. drop. Yeah. Because he, I mean, it was over. But like the game wasn't over, but like that ball was not coming back. If you see that, that moment was probably the great, one of the greatest moments I mean, of the postseason. Just swatted. He kills it. He knows it. Everybody else knows it. The moment he hits it, everybody in the stands no. go, well, there it goes. No. So that was a big, that was a huge thing. But yeah, it was so much fun. So well, I'm fired up for you guys. I know if I'm still fired up, that means y'all are re- yeah. Jack. So congratulations awesome. and appreciate once again your time and conversation. Yeah, man. Ready to thrive in your ministry work? Heritage Christian University has just released their upcoming spring semester course offerings. Courses such as History of the Bible with Wayne Kilpatrick, Marriage and Family Counseling with Jeffrey Brothers, or Acts with Justin Gouin. To see all the classes available, visit www.hcu.edu or email media at hcu.edu for more information. Nearly all of these classes were created to be taken remotely, so no matter your schedule or location, you can be a part of learning more about the Bible this year. The deadline to apply is December 1st, so don't wait. Apply today. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor Podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living, at benandtravis.com and receive all of our helping healing and humor extra content directly in your inbox. Until next time, look for us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.